Greetings once again, it's Prophet Tom here, and we're coming to open the mysteries of God. If you think of a battlefield in the time of war, what the enemy would do to stop you from getting close to their domain would be to set mine fields full of explosions so that it was dangerous to cross. Spiritually, this is what Satan has done in the world today. He has set minefields everywhere to ensnare you, to destroy you, to steal from you, and to bring you into bondage, into his grip. When we look at the mysteries of God, one of the great mysteries of the whole Bible centers around the mind. But before we get into that, let us look at our key verse. And we'll just again, just look at the one, Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29, it says, the secret things belong to the Lord, our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of his word. A powerful, powerful verse. I just feel to stay there for the next hour, but I can't because we've got to move on to our topic. But let's go to Romans and chapter 16. Another powerful verse there to encourage us regarding the mysteries of God. And so in John, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 16 and verse 25, it says this. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel. I, I, I just like that bit before you are. To him, that is to Christ, who is able to establish you. I want you to remember that as we get into this study today on the mind. It is God who establishes us. We need to work out what foundation we want to be built upon is a foundation that can crumble and there's a foundation that will never crumble to him now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of jesus christ according to listen according to the revelation of the mysteries kept secret since the world began. But now, say that, but now, you see, we live in an exciting time because before us, we have the now. You see, they didn't have this in the Old Testament, but through revelation and especially through the apostle Paul, God bought the now, but now made manifest by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith, to God alone, wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. This is the benediction, a benediction that most churches will say at the end of their service, uh, and they will say it perhaps without fully understanding what Paul was saying here. Paul is saying here that according to the revelation of the mysteries kept secret since the world began, but now they're revealed. But now they're revealed. Turn to the one next year and say, they're revealed. I know there's probably no one next year, but that's okay. Turn to the one next year. Let me uh, read this in the um, Passion Bible. And let me read it a little bit backwards. And so we're going to say, this wonderful news 
includes the unveiling, the opening of the mysteries kept secret from the dawn of creation until now. So, we'll go back to the beginning. I give all my praise and glory to the one who has made more than enough power to make you strong and keep you steadfast through the promises found in the wonderful news that I preach. That is the proclamation of Jesus, the anointed one. See, he reads backwards. It sounds good. It sounds here. Paul is saying, I'm unveiling the mysteries. And those mysteries all come through the wonderful news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a truth. What a revelation. And so we're looking today at the renewing of the mind. You know, uh, the mind is a battlefield. And the word of God has, I believe, more to say about our mind than probably any other subject because it is the greatest field that we will struggle in. And God, knowing that, begins to open up these mysteries. That's why we've spent a couple of weeks looking at this, and we may continue next week, uh, because the mind is such an area. You know, Paul says, the things that I want to do, I don't do because of this wretched thing up here. How many of us have said that? How many of us have struggled spiritually? I mentioned this morning on our talk that, uh, you know, there are many Christians that I've spoken to and probably at times even myself uh, have, uh, have questioned God. Why are there no miracles? Why isn't this person healed? Why isn't that person healed? Is God real or isn't he real? And you see the foundation that we have will establish our answers. Philip leaves Jerusalem. He leaves Jerusalem as a deacon, as I said this morning. And don't worry, those that listen this morning, we're not going to stay here. But Philip said that, uh, as Philip said this morning, he left Jerusalem. He, he had to flee from Jerusalem, leaving his house, leaving everything, and went down to Samaria and preached Jesus Christ. Philip knew his foundation. Philip knew that death nor persecution could affect his relationship with God. We need to know our foundation. We are in a battle, in a battle of the mind. In Proverbs 29, it says, a person, as a person thinketh in his heart, this is what he is. As a person thinks in his heart, this is what he is. You see, we struggle if we're thinking in the flesh and we look all around of us. So, you know, the coronavirus, man does not have an answer because they're thinking in their mind. They're not going to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They're, they're trying to sort this out. There are Christians that are bound by fear everywhere you go. There are, are believers that are living under the control of the enemy right now, wondering where their next meal is going to come from. But, you know, the woman at Zarephath, that tells us, uh, went out to cook her last meal. God had given her a word beforehand. God had said to her, now listen, woman of Zarephath, listen to me. A man's going to come along and you've got to invite him in to live for you, live with you in your house. His name is Elijah and he will feed you and provide for you for the next period of time. And when she meets with Elijah, and Elijah says, give me a portion first. She says, oh, no, master, this is all I have. Uh, listen to this. this. This is the soul speaking. This is the stupidity of the soul. She says, I'm going to cook this meal and die. I'm going to cook a little meal for my son, a little meal for myself, 
and then die. What's the point in cooking the meal if we're going to die? But right in front of her, right in front of you is the answer, is the source. The woman with the jugs who, who went to Elisha and said to Elisha, my master, my, my husband is dead. He has these debts. They're going to take our children off us. What am I to do? And he tells her what to do. And she obeys. And goes and reaps a wealth worth perhaps millions of dollars. Something she could live on for the rest of her life. Because she focused her mind on God. And not on losing her sons. Not on the environment around her, about her. In uh, Romans and chapter uh, 8 and verse 7, uh, we read these words. Uh, let's go to Romans 8 and chapter 8 and verse 7. It says, in fact, let's read uh, from verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds. For those who live according to the flesh sets their minds on the things of the flesh. You know, I just looked a few moments ago and, and on Google and it came up that in the middle of this coronavirus, people have lost their jobs. People cannot pay their rent, etc., and so on. In parts of the world, you know, I'm trying to raise money to feed uh, children in India whose problem is not the coronavirus, it's starvation. The effects come from the coronavirus, but right now their concern is just to have a morsel of rice to eat to get them through another day and yet on google today one of our largest supermarkets or, or clothing stores website crashed because they were offering children's toys and the rush was so great online that the website could not handle it which just a natural mind sets their things on the things of the mind, on the things of earth. Gain, give me, give me, give me, give me. It doesn't matter what the debt is. I read the other day that over 2,000 Australians are going to more than likely lose their houses this, week, this year because they can't pay the mortgage, perhaps because of the coronavirus. But, you know, it's, it's tragedy. And so it says here, for those who set, for those who have, live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. This is the difference. These are the two fields. These are the two foundations. Which one will you choose? Will it be the things of the world? Look at the early church. The early church lost their homes, lost their bank accounts, lost their wealth through the persecution that came through Jerusalem. Today, people are losing their homes. People from the Middle East that had to flee out of that country or be killed, left beautiful homes behind, left possessions behind. You know, the earthly things, listen to me, the earthly things mean nothing. We can lose it just like that. Let's go to verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, it's tragically, I read today, one of the great movie stars of India, I think it was, worth millions, took his own life or took their own life. What a tragedy. See, finances 
cannot give you the answer you're, you're seeking for. Friendship cannot give you the answers you're seeking for. Position of authority cannot give you the answers they're seeking for. Family cannot give you the answers you're seeking. Only Christ Jesus and a relationship with him can fulfill the innermost beings of your heart, your spirit realm, and give you the answers you're searching for. For the carnal mind is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now listen, because the carnal mind is at war with God. Do you want to be at war with God? Do you want to be fighting with God? Imagine waking up in the morning and say, well, I've had a good sleep. Now it's time to get into battle with God. You know, in reality, without knowing it, that's what many people are doing. These people that are leading the way with abortions, 50 million plus people, uh, children, unborn babies that have been slaughtered and killed. They're at war with God. Wow. They're at war with God. What a tragedy for their life. You know, those that took the Bible out of schools are now re reaping the rewards that they sow. The rebellious young people, the corruption, young people bombed out on drugs and lives destroyed because they took Bibles out of the school. They're at war with God. We, we never seem to learn what happened to Pharaoh, what happened in Babylon, those who would touch and harm God's children wiped off the face of the earth. Let's go to Genesis and um, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, it says, and this we know the scene. Uh, it says early in the cha uh, chapter, it says, we see the wickedness of man. It says, and men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men and were fair and took them as wives and chose them. And the Lord said, my spirit will not always thrive with man. For he is flesh. Wow. Just think on this for a moment. Imagine us in this 21st century, even though we may only have a little bit of the spirit of God. Imagine us. God all of a sudden taking that away. What would society be like? It's the axis that holds this universe together. We are so important, church. We are the foundations of this world. We are the light of this world. We are holding this world. You may think we're the minority, but we are holding this world together. Verse 5 says this, the Lord saw the wickedness. You know, God is watching. God is watching how we pray. God is watching how we live. God is watching how we react to circumstances, not to bring the big stick out and beat us, but to see what honors he can bestow upon us, what more anointing he can bestow upon us. The Lord saw, now, now listen, this is so, so tragic, so tragic. The Lord saw the wickedness of men was great on the earth. How bad is the wickedness of man today? Look around. How bad is it? You know, is it five? I think it's five people a week in Australia. Wives are beaten and killed. Tragic. 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 People just go on the streets and kill someone. You know, in, a, in, a, in, in the United States of America, people will walk into schools to innocent children and began firing guns and killing children. How wicked. 50 million 
babies being aborted, homosexual marriages. How wicked is man? And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was continually evil. And the Lord was sorry. Wow, I, I, I'd hate to think that I woke up this morning and the first thought that came to my heart was, or the first picture that came in my mind was seeing God and tears running down his face, looking at his children, you and I, looking at the people on this earth, looking at his creation. And it says here, And the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was continually only evil. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on this earth. Now listen, and it grieved him. And it grieved him. Do we grieve God? this morning in our actions what we've done through this day here in australia it's nearly 4 30 in the afternoon so so we've spent a full day on this earth have we grieved god this day where is our mind what foundation is our mind built upon the lord was sorry he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. This must have been so hard for God to say. So the Lord said, I will destroy him. I will destroy my creation. I will destroy the person that I gave dominion of this earth to. I will destroy the person that I planted in the Garden of Eden and said, multiply and have dominion. I will destroy the man, the person that I created so that I can have fellowship with, so that I can have communion with, so that I could, could, could come and wrap my arms around them and love them. I, I, God Almighty, as I look at my creation, I have no other option. Imagine God coming to that point. I have no other option. It breaks my heart. You know, I'm a father of two children. I'm a grandfather of three grandchildren. And to look at my children and to say and see that they've done wrong things and, and would have to turn around and say, and I haven't had to do this, thank God, but I had to turn around and say, I have no other option, but I must destroy them. Because their heart and their mind is wicked. It would be so hard. I heard a preacher preach this morning on YouTube and he got this message that his daughter had this thing in her eye and they found out it wasn't a thing, but it was uh, the creation of a disease that could have led to things much, much worse. And it shattered him for three days. He couldn't get out of bed. I wonder if God was in that boat. But then this preacher got up, began to preach and saw, saw in the next days, it was an attack of the enemy, saw in the next days 600 saved. Uh, 
And uh, the, the next day after that, this thing was totally out of the child's eye. Could you imagine? Here's God looking at his, uh, you know, I know I'm laboring here and wasn't my intent to labor here. But I want to tell you, some of you people that are living in sin right now, some of you people that are watching pornographic stuff on the Internet, some of you people that that are involved in things that are ungodly. This is what God did. God looked down from heaven. And God said, I will destroy man whom I have created. God created you. God created me. I hope that he never looks down and says, I've got to destroy Tom. I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. I wonder why beast and creeping things and the birds of the sky. For I am sorry that I have made them listen to me right here. If you build your life on the flesh, if you build your life on the foundation of Satan, you not only affect you, but you affect everyone around you here because of the wickedness of man, the animals, the beast, the trees, creation, as it was in that time, was destroyed. Don't think, well, this is my life. I'll do what I want. No, 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 it's not your life. Whatever you do affects other people and other things. But he goes on to say, for I am sorry that I have made them, but I hope this is you. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Let me go back to, um, uh, let's go to Colossians chapter 3. And we'll read from verse 1, but first we'll go to verse Five, and verse 5 says this. Live as one who has died to every form of sexual sin, impure, impurity. Live as one who died to diseases, to, to diseases and desires for forbidden things, including the desires of wealth which is the essence of idol worship. When you live in these vices, you irritate and anger God because of your disobedient acts. See, we need to understand the foundation. We need to understand the foundation. We need to put to death the things of this world. We need to put to death anything that would control us, that would take us away from our faith in Christ Jesus, that would take us away from our love in Christ Jesus. There's nothing wrong with wealth uh, so long as Christ is number one in your life. Uh, go across to Ephesians uh, and uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, and this is how we do it. Uh, this is the format that we've got to take here. I love this chapter. It's one of my favorites in the Bible. It's warfare. And we need to be in warfare, church, uh, especially with the understanding of what we, we know is happening. For it says in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul is talking about putting on the armor of God. That is becoming a spirit being, renewing our mind. You see, it talks about these things. We'll come to it in a moment. But verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, Important words from Paul. Therefore, 
take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with true, having put on the blessed plate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, having taken the shield of faith uh, uh, with which uh, you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now listen, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let's put the helmet on. Let's put the helmet on. Let's put the helmet on. Now let's go to Romans chapter 12. Well, a passage we began to look at last week. And so we have around five minutes to go. And so in this five minutes, we'll revisit what we said last week to bring home what we need to say this week. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, here is the two areas again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed. We've got to take our mind, and we've got to give it to God. We've got to remember and realize that Christ died on the cross and set us free. When we looked at the cross, go to Ephesians as we finish today. We won't go back to Colossians. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. And in Ephesians chapter 1, um, let's go to verse uh, 17. No, 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and uh, your love for all the saints, uh, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is Paul talking about us. I know you who are listening and myself. I know we love God with all of our hearts. And we're here listening today on this channel. And this is Paul writing to you. And Paul saying, thumbs up, guys. Great job where you're serving God. And then he goes on. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. See, how do we renew our mind? It's right here. The spirit of wisdom. That he may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. So, so the mystery opening up to you, the mysteries of Jesus Christ opening up to you. The more the mysteries of Christ that you know, the more you will be like him. Verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? How great is God's power? How great is God's power? Can God renew your mind through his power? Well, let me see. It says this in verse 20, which he worked in Christ. Listen, this is the power of God, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. How great is God's power? Well, it's great enough to raise Christ from the cross. It's great enough to take Christ 
and to seat him at his throne next to the king of kings, next to almighty power. But how great is this power? Let's read on. It says in verse 21, this, this power is far above all principalities. Uh, this and, 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 and far above power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. That's our age. This power of Almighty God is greater than the powers of this age that you and I live in. This power is greater than this age. And so, you know, this is why we, we need to have a renewed mind. This is why we need to focus on God. But how great is this power? And it goes on in verse 22. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Christ is head of everything. Christ is head of you. Christ is head of the universe, of which is the body of the fullness of him who fills all in all. Listen to verse uh, 6 uh, of chapter 2. And raised us, you and I, raised us up together and made us all together, sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, what is this heavenly places? What happens in this heavenly places? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's passed on. See, Christ said uh, in, in, in John chapter 14 uh, and verse 12, uh, he says that you, the church, uh, you, Tom James, uh, you, uh, John, uh, you, Addy, uh, you uh, will do greater works uh, than I did. You will do greater things than I did. And so here we see that the power that was given to Jesus was power above principalities, above power, above might, above dominion, above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. He has placed everything under his feet uh, and gave him to be the head of all things, the church. Uh, when we accepted Jesus Christ uh, as our Lord and Savior, chapter 2, verses 1 through to 5, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, at that point, uh, God raised us up like uh, he did to Christ. Uh, God raised us up uh, uh, together and made us sit together in heavenly places next to Jesus Christ. The power that Jesus had is our power. We are the sons of Almighty God. We should not be controlled by the wickedness of this world. We should not be controlled by the carnal mind, but we should be, be, be renewing our mind day by day by day by day in the name of jesus wow what a note to finish this is prophet tom what a joy it has been to be with you today and to share this subject again we've just shared a snippet there's hundreds of verses i got them here hundreds of verses on this and we'll continue again uh next week on this topic opening the mysteries of God. If you're free tomorrow morning, I start the day off in God's Word, a devotion, a five, six minute devotion every morning. Uh, I enjoy, I invite you to join in with us as we look at the works of God in the book of Acts. Well, God bless you. Have a great day if it's morning for you. If it's evening, have a great evening. This is Prophet Tom. See you next time.